our heroes are back with a daring plan to finally gain more than just a foothold in the city. But it all hinges on them revealing Catalina's identity to the Duke's Rebellion, who they are not sure is entirely trustworthy. I see absolutely no way that this could go wrong for them. All right. We last left off. You guys were going to go to the Duke's Rebellion to convince them to side with you against the Gravediggers. Um, Catalina is coming with you to, in disguise, she will reveal herself at an opportune moment if it presents itself. Do you guys have anything you want to do before you go? Anything you want to declare? Any information you want to gather? Are we having her wear the bracelet and yes. then undo it? Okay. That would be the only thing to declare, is that she does indeed have it. Yes, she she is doing that. She is not purposely sabotaging your plan by walking <laughs> in as Catalina. Uh, she looks like a general member of the populace. There's nothing remarkable about her remarkable about her in her disguise you know she is extra five <laughs> trying to think if there's anything specific i don't think so i think i'm good what's the name of your friend in the duke's rebellion Vinny or sigrether um i want to say it was victor. victor yes victor i do have it written down all right adriana is the leader of the duke's rebellion yes you guys spend some time downtime waiting till evening where you know that they are meeting since their most recent headquarters was burned down in a guard raid. You make your way to a different part of town that is falling apart in the same way the area of town around the Vagabond, Vagabond Bog Tavern was. You find an equally falling apart tavern as the Vagabond Bog Tavern. Man, I hate you guys for naming it that. <laughs> It's like as bad as the Grove. I can remember the name, but it's like a tongue twister every time. You find another tavern, though, that seems very similar. It looks like taverns being or headquarters being burned down on them is not a rare occurrence or an uncommon thing that has happened to them. They know how to scatter to the wind and rebuild pretty quickly, it looks like, since it's been only a couple weeks since you've last seen them. You guys enter the tavern. What do you do? Uh, I think if I see Adriana, I'm going. Have you to... met Adriana? Um, I don't know if I've. I don't think I've personally met her on episode. Uh, Neostra is the only one currently who's met her. Oh, okay. There, there was the damsel in distress that Cormac saved, right? Yeah, that was Elisa. She's not. She was with the Outlaw Theater. She wasn't. Oh, okay. Like high up with the Duke's Rebellion. The Outlaw's Theater is the front for them, so yeah. not every you know it's not everyone's in it. Yeah, but she could be here. You don't know. Uh, okay. So it so she's she's like visibly there though. Yes. Oh, okay. I'm trying to decide. Yeah. Okay. So I think we'll just like walk up as a group then, and just kind of look around and go. Well, you seem to have not gone. It's not too bad that your whole place was burned down and you were scattered to the wind. I mean, it is not the first time that has happened to us. Is it not <laughs> the first time? It's not. Um, the gods have not been good since the f duke met an untimely device, uh, demise. So we're kind of used to this. We are not what they would consider on the up and up. Wait, hang on. I got a question. Yes. So this group existed before the Duke died? No, they were saying the guards sucked before, after the Duke died. Oh, okay. She's so saying the guard, the guards have been terrible since the Duke died. Gotcha. Okay, I thought, I thought, for some reason, I thought she was saying like the guards have been worse since the Duke died to their group. I'm like, that doesn't make sense because the group didn't exist. No, okay, they've I, they've just been in general worse since the Duke died. I'm with you now. I understand. So what is, like, the goal? Like, if you keep getting places burned down, constantly at odds with the guard, city besieged, like, what is, you know, like, not five-year plan necessarily, but, you know, kind of, what is the plan? <laughs> Where do you see yourself in five years? <laughs> yeah. Dead, I assume, like... <laughs> <laughs> and he said the same thing five years ago. <laughs> if we're unlucky, yeah, dead. I mean, our hope right now is to get rid of all of these terrible tyrants and run them out of town, whether that's bog lurchers or 
Senor Santiago or whatever despot comes next. What about Catalina? Surely that should be her job, no? I mean, she kind of sucks. Look at her. She's on the throne. She gives pigs to once a month. Do you think that can feed all of us for even a meal? You look around at a relatively large, or she gestures around to a relatively full tavern. Oh, no, but I mean, the city is under siege. What Only one person can, can do so much. Yeah, but she seems to be doing so much for her friends and sycophants and not for those like us. We What if somebody else were on the throne? Somebody who could um, continue the Duke's legacy. I mean, we have the Duke's legacy here. In spirit, though. I mean, that would be good, but I'm also concerned that we keep going back and what happens when another tyrant comes or they birth a tyrant? Well, okay, you kill so, them. So, See? So here it, That's what I'm saying, though. Why, why, why do the kill them step when we could just not put them on the throne? Well, and that's the question. Is, okay, you run people off. What is the next step according to you? Well, I've heard of another country that is everyone is a noble and everyone gets a vote in parliament. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember what in world they call it. In this game is like France rolling heads at this point. Is that like happening? <laughs> French Revolution is not happening yet. It is pre French Revolution, but getting close. <laughs> and you guys are on the border of France, so. We sure are. But. She is referencing Austria, Hungary, whatever it is in this. The would that be? Would that be Eisen? No, it's the. I know Eisen was more Germany, but it's the Commonwealth one. Smart Shin Commonwealth. All right. Well, I mean, that's uh, at this point. This this is strictly hypothetical. Um, but uh, we we did want to let you know that we did go out and we did find the monsters that have been attacking wagons up north. And they are taken care of? They are taken care of. Well, sort of they're our friends now in a way, you know, like they are attacking the bog lurchers. That is only a good thing. I'm hoping that werewolf attacks make bog lurchers not so much like being here. I think that was a good way of taking care of two problems with one stone. Of course it was. We're very smart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm beginning to see that. I think you guys will fit mostly in here with the Duke's Rebellion. Okay, so your name is Duke's Rebellion. And you're telling me, oh, we are going to make everyone a noble. And this is in concept not an idea that I am necessarily opposed to, but there is a practicality that must be discussed. You do not have enough swords, I am guessing. That is... A bleak but fair assessment of us. There's a reason. Let, let us be bleak. Yeah, no one who's currently calling themselves the royalty of this city is going to just go, oh yeah, you can have it. You've convinced me. That is not going to happen. You will have to take this city. So, this becomes my question now, right? You need friends, I believe. People who can work with you on this call who are not the town's guard. Or Senor Santiago... Or Catalina, who is, you know, who we assume is Catalina, you will need other people. And you will need something to rally around, no? I mean, that is why we chose the name the Duke's Rebellion. Symbolism is important. He, like, looks around the, the sort of, like, decrepit, starving bard going, like, is not enough. <laughs> she, like, does that, like, arguing in her head, moving her head back and forth. Fair. <laughs> So, let me first make this suggestion. While doing our job, we may have met the uh, gravediggers, yes? Yes, the... those... Scum, you might say. Scum, that's a nice way of putting someone who's extorting the whole town. But sure, scum. Yeah, they're definitely scum that wants to kill you as well. So, we were kind of hired to kill you by the gravediggers. You know, we accepted the job in the moment because we were, like, there at under guard, so there wasn't, like, a no option. 
she she ca- very casually just puts her hand like on the sword. <laughs> but let's uh, we should tell them the whole story. I'm oh, listening. <laughs> they suspect that you might have raided one of their safe houses, and they wanted us to deal with you. But of course, we're not going to do that. We like you. We didn't. They are terrible. D- I I agree. I like me too. And they do suck. And and I'm I'm I fully suspect if we had refused their job, they might have just killed us right there. Not unlikely. They can just like murder you and stick you in a slab like you are in like an underground graveyard at that point. And the grave diggers are a, a faction who has quite a lot of swords and also a place to hide. Yes. They have a very defensible position for sure. So, here is what I see. I see them as an opportunity for cooperation. It just might need to be forced. Yes. All right. So, I do not disagree, but you know the part where we just talked about they have more swords than us and a impenetrable fortress? Those are the sticking points. I mean, points. we got in. I mean, four people versus... I th- I think forcing them is going to be more difficult than just being like, Hey, open your door. We have 20 guys. I mean, we have more than 20 guys, but you know what I mean. This does bring up another point. How many, like, able to fight and armed men do you have? Uh, do you think she's actually going to tell us that? That seems like, if she didn't trust us, why would she tell us that information? <laughs> why don't you trust us? <laughs> I mean... We did just tell her that we were contracted to kill her, that that's not a good... And that we didn't kill her! And we are not currently killing her! You woke up! We are trustworthy! (laughs) If we weren't trustworthy, you'd be dead! Those stories, you are very very bad at making friends. It's practical, though. I mean, also... I guess technically I'm trying to make allies, not friends, but eh. I mean, you could also just be bad at assassination and have botched that and be like, you woke up alive! I, you know? That happens to be not the case. Um, yeah, I mean, if I botched it, I would say the same thing. <laughs> no, I'm saying we've succeeded. Tell we that to the monster problem that solved itself. <laughs> right, we've succeeded at multiple uh, tricky, complex situations which involved cunning and swords. So I'd say we are, in fact, the folks that you want to listen to. I'm just saying cunning and good with swords does not mean trust. <laughs> They're different meters. You have not given me the requisite amount of gifts every day for a week. I have not fallen in love with you. But given our history and uh, the knowledge that we have about a way to get into the Gravediggers and that they do have a lot of swords, we are proposing an assassination. Not a botched one like with me. (laughs) We wouldn't be having this conversation (laughs) if we were intending to kill you. With all due respect. So, we're proposing cut off the head of the Gravedigger's Guild and join those forces underneath a new leader. Who are you thinking this new leader would be? I don't think they're just going to be like, oh cool, you killed Magnus, let's follow Adriana. It doesn't seem like they're going to go for that. I think they would promote one from within. Um... (laughs) <laughs> Tell me when you guys want Coptalina to we're, step we're in. We're trying to figure it out, I think. <laughs> yeah, I guess the, the first question is, like, do they know who we are? Like, have we told them that? I do not remember. No, I don't think so. I don't think anyone knows who, the, who we are unless unless somehow somehow they recognize us from something. No. Okay, Um, I am unsure. Okay, now, Zach, I have a mechanic question for you. Is convincing them of this plan going to be a check? I don't see a reason why it... It feels weird to make this, like, narrative argument mechanical. Okay, no, that's fine. That's fine. That's That's how I'm leaning... Where it's like, these people have similar, but my, like, slightly different endpoints. So, like, they're receptive to listening to you, and I feel like making you roll dice where it just feels weird, especially when I don't know what happened when you fail. But if we were, like, negotiating for specific things, then we might roll, because that would have, like, a number attached to it. Or, like, a success yeah, failure like, attached to it. Right. Okay. Cool. And maybe I'll have we you guys roll to see, like, how much they help in your plan. 
Or like how trusting they are. Right. Where it's like, yeah. if you're like, this is what we want for the planet. It's like, you get two guys, that's it. Or if like, sure, they'll yeah. do full scale siege with you yeah. on the grave diggers. No, that makes sense. But I, the way the conversation's going, I think they were, are agreeable to helping you out. Cause they also hate the grave diggers. Mm-hmm. So like, it's like a win, 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 win for them right now. They're just not seeing how it goes. Right. Um, okay. Are you guys cool with me doing a thing that kind of reveals who we are? I should probably should have asked this uh, beforehand, not right now. Um, so when she asked that question, Yostroy is going to just kind of like pause and go, so I will tell you a story. And he uh, like opens his hand and uh, breathes fire out into the room and uh, it takes the shape of a dead body. And he goes, five years ago, the four of us were guards of the Duke. Some of his most favorite and close guards. And the four of us here are failures. We are the ones who initially found the body of the Duke dead. And I believe we were then sort of blamed for it. Not saying that I'm necessarily famous, but I don't know how many one-eyed Rusans. Rusas? Rusans? Uh, There were in this city at the time, but you know... They could do fire magic. But yeah, that one was me. Anyways, so we stumble upon the body of our dead duke. We were immediately framed and we fled with who we kind of assumed was now our charge. His daughter, Catalina, who has been on a boat with us, sailing the seas, attempting to stop pirates... For the past five years. Now, as you can imagine, this puts us in an awkward place. Um, the, uh, image on the floor of, like, the fiery dead duke switches to a boat, um, that's, you know, like, sailing in circles. For years, we raised her and attempted to instill in her that ability to lead, particularly to lead those who decide battle is necessary into that battle. And to, yes, take on the responsibilities of, you know, that were once her father's. The tricky thing is, we come back only to find an imposter stands in her place, and the, the, like, fiery image changes to a, like, woman throwing tiny pigs. (laughs) 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 And we find this fraud tossing pigs instead of... An empty throne waiting for Catalina. Now, again, things are complicated. We assume the Duke was murdered, probably by whoever this fake Catalina is. And we assume that murderer is still here. But I have to guess that murderer is not you. Well, that's a lot to process, but no, we did not murder the Duke. I'm trusting that. I, I see I see what you're doing by using the word trust. I, I get it. <laughs> so what this means is this. I trust you didn't assassinate me? Is that what you want me to say? You should, yes. Underst- I guess when I say we chose not to assassinate you, understand that the four of us are not four random bakers that showed up in your town and happened to be okay at things. We were hand-selected by the Duke to keep him from dying. Granted, we failed, but I'm guessing that failure was on an army scale, not one guy showing up. I I do want to point out, saying that you failed on preventing an assassination does not make me believe you could pull off one to kill me, but I see your point. He gave us the day off! He gave us the night off. Do you want us to try? <laughs> Why are you so stuck on this? Is that anything you think? Do you do realize we specifically went up to the north to talk with the monsters to make sure that they are not going to be attacking wagons anymore as something that you asked us to do? I'm s- that is the level of trust that we are asking you to now put into us. All right. All right. I'm sorry. It's just it's not every day someone comes up and said I could kill you if I wanted to. I was taken a little aback. I apologize. That's on me. Continue on, Nostra. If you do not know a lot of people that could kill you if you wanted to, we are in, we are going to be in martial trouble <laughs> when it comes to fighting uh, the entire town's guard. <laughs> they, they just usually don't point it out when they are meeting me for 
what is many of you the first time. It's the second time for me. I'm the one that pointed it out. But it's okay. All right. So, still, cultural faux pas. Maybe it's a difference between Russians and Castilians, you know? I think it's maybe a difference between me. I've been stuck on the boat for five years with the, you know... Three years. Three, three years. years? Is it three, not five? Three. I thought it was five. Yeah, because we only did three years of pregame. Sorry, three years. Uh, it felt like five. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> I've been nearly dying for multiple years. I don't think it uh, instills in one a lot of social niceties. But, be that as it may, I'm not here to be a social nicety person, uh, in- unless you're interested in hearing a grim story about the nature of greed. <laughs> Would you call it like a grim fairy tale? Uh. No, those guys are those guys are from Essen and their hacks. <laughs> Aizen, but good try. Aizen? What did I say? Aizen. <laughs> it's the accent. It's definitely the accent. <laughs> That's how everyone in Arisa says it. <laughs> so, how do... How do I know what you're saying is true? Well, well... We have a Catalina on the throne, and you're saying that she is not Catalina. Okay. That is what we are so saying. So, here is the fun part, and, you know, no one's gonna like to hear this. I think I'm maybe including the DM. Uh, birth certificates do not exist and neither does DNA. There is literally no way to know for sure. But what you have the choice of is, do you want that Catalina to be the real Catalina? Or do you want the Catalina that showed up with us, people that have helped you out recently, to be the real Catalina? Because you have to pick one or the other. Well, definitely, if I have to choose one or the other, definitely the latter. Because if she has more swords, she is the real Catalina, and nothing else makes her the real Catalina. So fair enough. So, do I get to meet this real Catalina? In fact, you do. May I present? Uh, are, are we in the middle of the tavern right now? You're off to a side, not like middle middle. Would you like us to retreat to somewhere more private than you can get her? Yeah. I think that might be the best situation <laughs> right now. Just, uh, you know, we have to be careful. So as Cormac tries to <laughs> pipe up, well, in fact, Magdalene just pushes him aside. Can we go somewhere more private? <laughs> so she takes you into the back. All right, do you need to go call for her or something? Like, when, does one of you need to go? Like, you're in, like, a small, like, little tavern, like, a room, like, with a table and chairs. It's private. Does, does she not notice the a, a random extra woman that came with us? She wouldn't know how many, you uh... know. Well, she's also never met the whole group as a whole. You, you did, you did say the four of us, and five people came with her. <laughs> yeah, I am. And this is what, what was it, my squire Patsy? <laughs> <laughs> she's currently holding two coconuts. It explains itself <laughs> when she's here. <laughs> Very nice to meet you, Patsy. <laughs> no, so we're in the back room. <laughs> no, I think one of us like nods to her <laughs> to take off the bracer. Um, that would be me. I am Catalina, and she takes off the bracelet and the facade drops. Rightful Duchess of the Throne of Oratrios. Yeah, I'm not the fake Alina, as Magdalena calls her. It's a good name. It keeps us from saying fake Catalina all the time. I mean, I agree, but also, you know, I hope to be just Catalina, that we don't have to have nicknames for me. You don't have a nickname. You're Catalina, she's fake Alina. She has a nickname. She- you have the regular name. This is confusing. Uh, yes, it is. We could call you Real Alina. <laughs> Please don't. You want the nickname? Is that what you're trying to say now? You already gave me a nickname. You don't get to give me two. I know. Her nickname is Duchess because she's the rightful Duchess of the throne. Well, that's not it's the not nickname, nickname and the title, title. but... <laughs> she high-fives no <Nostra. laughs> <laughs> Well, so this does change things, I think, because if this was the real... F- the real fake? The w- the one sitting on the throne? The one with the most swords? So that would be the... If this is the one who has been here for two years, she would probably be having a lot of guards killing us right now. Correct. So we're going to have this Catalina. The real one? Yes, well, I mean, according to your friend, the real one is the one on the throne because she has more swords. That's where this gets confusing. The one here with us presently... We're going to have her go in, kill Magnus, and say that she is ruler of the Gravediggers now. Uh, 
I don't necessarily think we need to murder Magnus so much as we need to aggressively convince Magnus that uh, he must follow us, which I believe that our Catalina can do. Which might also prove to you that she is someone worthy of following. Exactly. We're, what we are going to do is I have picked up some magic and we are going to offer Magnus the option to join us peacefully. And if not, we will curse him. Gormag nods in agreement. <laughs> okay, quick thing though. If we are going to curse somebody, can we make sure it doesn't like explode all of the catacombs under the city? Like... The last curse that happened and turned people into werewolves? Is that how we got the werewolves? I mean, they showed up after a giant green fiery magical explosion at the town center. I believe this will be red fiery magic which does not turn people into werewolves unless everyone I have burnt is now a werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you should keep accurate statistics of who you <laughs> burn with red fire. Sorry, I'm playing coy. I know every single person I have burned, none of them are werewolves. Many of them were, in <laughs> fact, children who learned lessons but did not become werewolves. <laughs> that is alarming. Yeah, he does this all the time. He threatens a lot of people about burning them constantly and saying, Don't be greedy! Babushka will come and eat your soul! Just, like, kind of constantly. It's literally what happened to me. So, yeah, it's a good message to give people. <laughs> But no, we're not going to create werewolves, though I am a little perturbed about who did do that. Yeah, I mean... We can circle back to that at a later date, but... Yeah, there's also an extremely large tactical advantage of werewolves. So, I mean... I mean, yeah, you did turn that into a tactical advantage after only two years of them attacking caravans, so I guess we <laughs> it's a win-win. That's what I'm saying. We Honestly, having a handful more werewolves, not a bad thing. <laughs> to be fair, I don't want to force people against their will to be werewolves. You know, it seems kind of like something nobles would do, and just be like, you're a werewolf now. You that know? is not our intention. As Catalina said, we are, we are going to give Magnus a choice. Yostroy looks down at his list that he keeps with him. The first one is Make more werewolves, and he just scratches that out. <laughs> yeah, I was never our intention to make more werewolves. That's a stupid idea. It's a dumb, really dumb idea to make more werewolves. We're not doing that. I mean, I'm not saying that it's a bad idea. I'm saying it's a bad idea to... He gets back out his list. <laughs> make more werewolves, question mark. <laughs> okay, it's, well, we're tabling it. <laughs> it's bad to force people to be werewolves against their will. Yes, obviously. That's not our plan. <laughs> Ask people... To be werewolves <laughs> goes on the list. Burn and bite? Question mark. <laughs> so, what are you asking me for then? Like, obviously, we want to work with you guys. If you guys take over the Grave Diggers Guild, that would be good. I presume. I, I presume you're not like sociopaths that are just going to make it worse. So, I'm trusting you on that. I think it will be better if you run the Grave Diggers Guild. It's hard for it to be worse, though. I will say. It'll be better for you. It'll be better for you, for sure. <laughs> right? They kind of hate us and want us dead. So From you, we need a small force to come with us, ensure success in overtaking the Gravedigger's Guild, and your willingness to ally with them uh, once Catalina is installed. How many is a small force? Let's say a very conservative 10,000. Is that like all of your people... Half of your people. She just... 300% of your people. <laughs> she just looks at you like she just stares you down. I'm eyeballing first. I figured that would make more sense than lowballing and being like one. Sorry, I meant two. So so you could definitely do like a, a 400 20. <laughs> How many people do you want to go and attack the grave diggers? Not 10,000. That is not the real number you are asking for. That is trying to figure out how many troops we have. Is this for, uh, she, uh, Magdalena turns to like the rest of the group. Is this for the, uh, the group that is sneaking in or the hopefully, or like a distraction? I think that entirely depends. Like, honestly, it depends on how many people we have. If a distraction on top of us sneaking in is possible, I do not believe that's a bad idea. But if only the only force we have available to us is 50 guys, then no, like, we'll just take three, call them, you know, prisoners from the 
you know, the Duke's Rebellion, here to beg for mercy and a ceasefire, and then, you know, we move on. I guess it wouldn't be a ceasefire, it'd be like a cease sword, <laughs> an armistice. So here's the problem, is Zach does not know how numbers work for warfare. Well, let me ask you this, Zach, is a distraction remotely necessary, or is this like putting a hat on a hat? You can have a distraction and it'll give you... Like advantages to our sneak again. Yeah, it'll make things easier. Okay, that's, yeah. So we can roll now to see if we can get, like, one distraction, two distractions, or no distractions, mm. along with our force, sneaky force, to go in with us. Yes. Yeah, okay. sneaky force needs to be, like, two to three people at most. The If we can also get, like, half the city to riot at the, you know, front gate of the Gravediggers, that's not a bad deal either. Yeah, we won't we won't dictate, like, number of distraction people. It'll just be, like distraction force oh, right like ambiguous like, force does that sound good yeah, yeah. You make your rolls and i will give you information and agreements depending on how you roll cool. nostra you're the one rolling this that's fair can any of us help him we just have to donate hero points every hero you can one person can donate a hero point and i'll give him three extra dice he's also able to spend one hero point of his own to do it you cannot use your give roll cody yeah, I gotcha. I will donate a hero point. Okay, because I'm very low on hero points. Yeah, I have two right now, so I can I can lose one. All right, so Cody, you get you're doing your first convince roll of this session, so you get one die for that. You get three dice for Caitlin or Cormac helping you out. So okay, it's convince. It's the first time I'm doing convince. I'm gonna say I'm using wits, and then I get three dice for Cormac. That's a lot of dice. <laughs> I rolled bad. It's a lot of it's a lot of ones. Oh no! Oh, no. Do you have rank three in anything? I got three successes. No, like in your traits or skills, do you have rank three? That's only. I think that's just the skills, right? Okay. Oh, yeah. Do you have any skills? Is your convinced skill rank three? No, my convinced skill is a one. Gotcha. Okay. So you got, but I got three successes. Okay. That could have been worse. It could have, yeah. All right, so in the perfect world, we have 10,000 soldiers. You can have them all. What do you want us to do? If you could have anything you wanted, how do you want this to go? So this is you listing what you want, and I will tell you... What she's able to do. Yes, with... And something you want is just to have a more accurate representation of her troops, and that can be one of your, like, six... You have three successes to send on asking questions slash asking favors, Cody. I gotcha. Uh, the ideal world here would be you send, I don't know, you call it three of, you know, leadership slash best fighters you have with us. We come in, we say, hey, we have people here to surrender and beg your mercy. You let us walk in for, call it 15 minutes. Whatever guards are with us, we subdue at the same time. A large force just starts attacking the gravediggers in mass. Creates pandemonium, all the gravediggers rush to the front to try to handle that. We've already been let in, we sneak down, fight Magnus, curse or not curse Magnus, and then, you know, yay, we won. That is the plan. All right, I can, we can do that. We will give you, do you want two or three? You get two. I'm not giving you three. <laughs> Just because I don't want to have to be three people. Okay. Fair. <laughs> I want at least five discrete voices. <laughs> Different ages, genders, ethnicities. Cool. I'm counting. I, I will do that. I'm counting all of you guys as different ages, genders. You all count as one of the voices, though, in the group. <laughs> so then I have to just have one voice that's different than the four of you. There we go. So I will send two guys with you. Is that enough since there are going to be... The five of you, and at a certain point, it's going to become untenable to sneak with so many people. Fine. Sure. And then we will create a distraction on the outside to pull as many grave diggers as we can out of the tunnels. It might... We'll see how well we do, but we are we are good at making distractions. We might not be the largest fort faction in the city, but we make do with what we have. Well, and you are very flashy, so, you know... We are. You put on a show, bring them out. We can do that. Okay, and do are all of us going going in at the sneaking at the same time, or do we want some of us out at the front gate to help help with the pandemonium? Well, I mean, honestly, that's not the worst idea I've ever heard, you know. But sort of, I'm iffy on that because I think I think I might not be the best one for sneaking. 
I th- I think I might be better served out out at the at the distraction out front. I mean, I'm not going to say no to a cultural exchange program. <laughs> that does put skin in the game for us a little bit, and also, yeah, I mean, Sigurd will, you know. She can bosh Hudson. <laughs> you know, it, it tends to attract d- d- dramatic conflict, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and and if I'm being honest, the the thought of a big battle with the Great Diggers actually sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> so is it just going to be you, Sigurd or do you want two of you to come? Out of game, do you guys want to split up into pairs? Because I feel like that works better. Yeah, I was just about to say. Okay. Uh, I think uh, I think sending uh, two and two makes sense to me. So uh, I will join up with Sigurdur, and uh, we shall join uh, up with the Duke's Rebellion. Uh, but, uh, who's going to then keep me safe, though? Oh, uh, yeah, Cormac. <laughs> I, I, that'd be... That'd be... That'd be Cormac O'Rourke. You may have heard of him. Should it, but yes. <laughs> uh, you know, straight kind of looks between Cormac and Magdalena, <laughs> then back at Magdalena, then back at Cormac, and is like, oh, can we have three guys? <laughs> <laughs> As Magdalena says, like, I'll join you guys outside, you just see Adri- Adriana go, oh, thank the prophet. <laughs> I got the good ones. Nyozi, you have fire. I'm very frail. I lost it recently. I got very scared. Well, you're not going. <laughs> Can't you have me? Yeah, you have Cormac. You have fire, and you're not going into the uh, Hardindios. Well, if I need someone to flirt them to death. <laughs> also, you have me. Excuse you. I can use a sword just better than you. Better than a lot of people. Just, just to be clear, Cormac. I'm sure you could use a sword better than me. I don't have one. <laughs> just to be clear, Cormac, we're talking about the metal kind of sword, not any other kind of sword. Cormac blushes. <laughs> <laughs> stop it! Stop! 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 Stop it! Stop it! Anyone talk? Don't do this to me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be fine. And Catalina's a good fighter in her own right. We'll be more than fine. I've been training with Sigrithor for like what three years now. Or felt like five years of training. <laughs> I thought that... Just so much training. I thought that we, we left and she was like 11 and now she's 16. I thought it was five years. No, it was... Oh. She, you left when she was like 16 and now she's 19. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think we... That was a change. I think we were originally... She was going to be younger and it was going to be longer. But we shortened our our boat trip and... pre Aged her up a little bit. Yeah. Right. And there was a few other things I... I talked with people where, like, they want a plot lines to go, and I'm like, it doesn't make sense for you to be, like, for certain things to happen with ages, so. Yeah, because Cormac was young when he was hired, and it doesn't really make sense to hire somebody, like, younger than 18 to be your guard. Yesterday gets back out his list and writes, get three years of birthday presents, get Cormac and Magdalena to fight, see who's better. <laughs> <laughs> Cormac or like Mac or uh, Nostro is like getting out measuring tape and like measuring biceps. Like, would you get off? <laughs> uh, now I'm curious. Like, I'm actually kind of. Have you two ever fought each other? Or like, just I'm you sure know. we've sparred at some point. We've been busy for three years, though. It's worth readdressing. You know, I'm just curious. You know, which one of you would win? Well, we can worry about that after the grave diggers. Have I let you down? Yeah, so you guys good? <laughs> you guys seem We're very worried. <laughs> I'm a little worried about this plan now. It was I was trusting you guys, and all of a sudden, it just kind of all <laughs> fell apart in front of me. It's a little worrisome, if I'm being frank. No, uh, you know, Nozi is just uh, what would you what would you say? He is dramatic. I, I got I got that. You know, it's the whole like. Telling me a show story by burning into the wood of the floor with fire. And eccentric. See, exactly. He's going to throw a fuss about anything because he is dramatic. The floor looks better now. Okay, the floor <laughs> looks pretty good. <laughs> I didn't say it looked bad. I just said <laughs> you're dramatic. It's not an untrue thing. <laughs> All right, we're going to need a few days to drum up resources and plan this because we are going to be a distraction and we don't, we can't afford to do things halfway. That's how we get caught and killed. So we are going to need, let's say, four days to get this ready. Is that, will you guys be ready in that amount of time? Yes. All right. She gives you a way to contact her. This is how you can get in touch with us. We will, you guys are at, where do you guys, how do we contact you? Gormick pulls out his razor and (laughs) says her number. 
I imagine also like a straight razor though. You just like carve your number to a straight razor and hand it to him. <laughs> I like the idea of being like, oh, I want to get out a cell phone. Like, get out a cell phone from 20 years ago. Have you heard of the um, La Rosa Dolce? Is that that new bakery over east? See, you can find us there. All right, these. If we will be in touch. I think that went very well. I do too. Except for Yostroy <laughs> undercutting me. Yostroy just goes, look, I'm sorry. I was expecting to have two people there and now there's only... Well, I guess I was expecting to have three other people and now there's one other people and I got afraid. <laughs> I'm I'm still here. I'm going to be here. I know how to hold a sword. But I'm going to guess that Nozis and Cormac are going to keep you mostly out of the fight. As much as they possibly can, because you are kind of like the one we have to keep safe. I, I will not take unnecessary risks, as you have told me I should not do. I appreciate that, Katita. I, w- I will be careful, but I am also not going to let Nosy just die. Sorry, I don't know why I said Nosy. I'm not going to let Nostro just <gasps> die. Ah, Nosy! <laughs> Nostro. I am rubbing off on you. <laughs> I am so sorry. I I will defend you more now. To as penance, <laughs> <laughs> and I promise next time Friar Lewis gets going on one of his sermons, I will make up an excuse for you to get out of there and take the hit for you. You should listen to his sermons; they're good sermons. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is a moral lesson to be learned from his sermons. You should listen; to, they're good for you. They uh, enrich the soul. All this, you know. He's a good guy. Oh, the prophet provides. I mean, he is a good guy. I like Friar Lewis. He is a very nice man. And also, we're kind of going to make his life miserable for a long time. Where are we going to put him? Whoa, I did not think about him coming with us and what he'll look like. He's going to be wearing the bracelet. He's going to be disguised. Yeah, but he's going to have to be with us the whole time with people. It's fine. We'll figure it out. He it, just it, look like a normal guy that we're bringing along. A big normal guy, but a normal guy. Maybe we retcon it so to say that he's like six feet tall and call it a day, you know? So that is that is something I am a little unclear about, of how, how we are accomplishing our plan. Our, our plan is still to replace Magnus with Friar Lewis, but how do we do that with the with the people that the Duke's Rebellion is sending with you? Won't they see exactly what, what happens there? No, we're going to keep them in the back, and I think we'll sort of get separated, I imagine... Maybe See, this Ori is. We will stay with the the two in the back. This is where the flirting is good, Nostroy. That's true. Cormac can distract them with his flirting. What a bad point. Sure, if we think that will help. <laughs> well, Ori, you just use them as like the people who are watching your backs, right? And then we get cut off for just a second, and you go in, uh, murder Magnus, and then we bust in and see you cursing him. I think, actually, though, I think we should try to have Friar Lewis look like Magnus after we ambush him, and then throw Friar Lewis into, like, a hallway or something, so some gravediggers can see what we do. Ah, oh, fair. Because it's I don't... spectacle. Right. I think I think it is a bad idea to just be like, this is, this is Magnus. He's a squid monster. Now, that seems a little suspect, especially when Friar Lewis is still going to be Friar Lewis, I think. I think he's going to start preaching pretty quickly afterwards. And pretend Probably. that Magnus found the prophet. Well, just a hunch. Well, here, here's the question. I wonder. I wonder. If, I'm. I'm. I'm very curious to test the limits of the bracelet's powers. Can you? And you, maybe you have already tested this, Catalina. Can you slowly shift your appearance, like seamlessly, or does it? Is it like instantaneous? Like, could you like slowly change like a, a feature about yourself over a long period of time? It's based on your imagination, right? Yes. So So you could imagine yourself part way. Yes. And so then imagine what, yourself fifty percent and then imagine yourself seventy five percent. Yeah, the the way it works is that you instantly change. However, you can like instantly change to look like you're slowly changing. You, you could instantly change to different increments. It would take concentration. I think Friar Luce should maybe practice with it. Yeah, I think because I think what might be a good thing for him to do is he starts he starts off looking like Magnus. Then, once he is cursed, then he slowly changes into a mag, uh, looking like a Magnus that has been cursed into the same affliction that he that he has himself, 
and then over a longer period of time, slowly change into what he actually looks like to where he doesn't need the bracer anymore. I like that. Convincing. I mean, that works. All right. You guys are able to make it back to the Sweet Rose. Is there anything you guys would like to do in preparation before this goes out? Before you guys go on your raid or distraction runs? Uh, Sigrether is sharpening her axe. I was going to say, if we're loose, get in front of that mirror. We're going to practice. <laughs> uh, Neostroy goes with and like makes flashes of ma- uh, like fire and stuff to accompany the transformation. Nice. To try to make it extra convincing. I like it. Oh no, I have been cursed. But maybe the light of the prophet can save me. <laughs> you know, Stray just slaps him. You don't believe in the prophet for like a year. Like a year, no prophet. <laughs> you believe only in death. <laughs> but maybe the light of death can... No, that sounds like I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> no, none of that either. No, I don't want to. You just no. need to pretend to be smug and evil. And All it's right. hard. But I believe in your acting abilities. I like to kick dogs. Perfect. You nailed it. Just talk about kicking dogs all of the time. And if there is a baby with candy, I will eat the candy (laughs) and the baby. Don't. (laughs) Am I doing all right? Taking baby, taking candy from a baby can be a good idea. Candy should, baby should not eat that much candy. It will spoil them. But don't then eat the baby. That's too, that's too far. Back it up a little bit. So you guys continue coaching Friar Lewis, who doesn't really have a mean bone in his body about how to properly be evil. Magdalena, are you doing anything? Uh, similar to Sigrether, uh, she is just kind of like gathering her stuff to fight. Oh, so something I never did test. And this is something we can say that I tested on our way back from the Hardin Dios. At some point, she tested one of her one of her runes, her runes that she had pre-stored in her bag. Do they still work? They do not. Okay, they've all been all been sapped, drained. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Then then she'll spend time preparing a bunch of new runes. All right, you guys spend your time preparing for the upcoming adventures. Hey Wanderers, thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Corsairs of Castile. This game is being run in the 7th C 2nd Edition system. If you want to hear more content from the Wandering Gamer Network, you can check us out at the Wandering Gamer Network website. We stream on Twitch with the username wandering underscore gamers, and you can follow us on Twitter at the WGN Podcast. We're also on Facebook and Instagram. All information about the music used can be found in the episode description. Until next time, wherever you wander, may you find your way home. <laughs>